Hi guys, I'm Rachna. I'm a anatomical and functional yoga teacher and a postural alignment therapist, training to be, but in the process. And I'm here at Momentum today, just helping them out. We're in collaboration. And the idea is to bring you basically 12 to 15, maybe 20 minute videos on how you can establish a safe, functional and optimal movement practice on your mat. It's not necessarily um, flexibility that we're trying to achieve, it's mobility, strength and optimal movement. So any questions, please let us know. But also these videos should be very easy to follow. Just hear me carefully and enjoy. So um, the first kind of sequence and the first series that I'm going to share with you guys today is a mobility for the wrists but also just teaching you guys how to hold a strong position into your wrists and therefore up into the elbows and the shoulders. With a lot of you being avid gym goers, um, maybe even weightlifters, just people trying to find functionality on your mat at home, I think the wrists are probably one of the most important elements of keeping safe but also having a good strong practice on your mat. So the sequence today focuses on the wrists and I'm going to teach you all about how the connection between your fingers and your shoulders actually works. So you're going to come down onto your mat, try and have a block with you. If you don't have a block, an empty shoe box works completely fine. And if not a shoe box, then a firm pillow also just the same. Like in most of my series, you're going to come down onto the floor and we're going to work into a pelvic reset just to get the posture in a neutral position before you start. You're going to grab the block and stick it just underneath your sacrum. The sacrum is the disc-like shape just underneath your pelvic structure. And you're going to have the block high enough to bring the tailbone just into the top edge of the block and bring your palms down onto the floor. And then make your way up to the shoulders, keeping the shoulders on the floor and the skull, the plate-like structure just behind your head, also down into the floor. And take your attention then to the toes, the big toe mounds. Sometimes what happens here is, is people kind of edge the feet out and pull the big toes off of the floor. What you do there is actually you're just kind of flopping into the pelvis and just kind of dumping into the lower back. So whether you've got shoes on during a, an intense kind of high intensity training or whether you're down on the floor in a, in a mat practice, really just try and connect down with the big toes and push the soles of the feet into the floor and just use the energy from the ground to contract upwards into the hamstrings and into the glutes. Bring the palms down into the floor and from here, I want you to take your attention from the back of the throat all the way down to the spine. And at the end of the tailbone, I want you to imagine that this laser light is pointing to the back of the knees as opposed to down behind the heels. And you'll feel that difference if you feel that the sacrum is lifted off of the block, you've got what's called an anterior pelvic tilt. And this is a really sort of big concern for most people. It's a big postural dysfunction and it really doesn't allow you to move the limbs in the most optimal way. So you want to have your pelvis into a neutral position just to begin with. Bring your palms just onto your ribs. And the first thing we're going to do is just optimize the breath. You're going to take a long deep breath from the back of the throat and it's going to sound long, deep and like an ocean. Long deep breath in. And with pursed lips, exhale long. Feeling the rise in the belly, the rise in the diaphragm as you inhale. And exhale, contracting down the diaphragm, contracting down into the pelvic floor for cavity. And again, long deep breath in. And exhale down. And then from there, bring the hands just down by the floor, very slowly, without tilting that tailbone forwards. I want you to keep the pelvis neutral, laser light pointing to the back of the knees, and lift your sacrum, your bum, off the block about half an inch. Coming up into a low glute bridge. We're going to activate into the posterior chain of the body, activating into the glutes. And all I want you to do is pulse up and down, just two or three times, 
Feeling the energy first from the big toes, up into the hamstrings, up into the glutes. And traditionally, and in most gym sort of sessions, what I see is as soon as somebody says, lift up into a glute bridge, I see people going like this. Now what happens here is, is that you're putting all the pressure and all the compression right up into your lower back. You've shortened the hamstrings, so that actually the hamstrings are doing most of the work and your glutes are not even fully engaged. So what you want to do is come back, reconnect with the sacrum down into the block, push the big toes into the floor and lift your sacrum about two or three inches off of the floor. You can slide the block away from you just for a minute and hold here. And once again, just keep pulsing up and down into the glutes just to reset and connect into the posterior chain of the body. With everybody sitting far too much, with us wearing shoes far too often, what happens is the whole of the back side of the body becomes what we call snoozy. And we need to just work safely but optimally in engaging the glutes and not clenching into the glute and pushing up into the hips and therefore expanding into the pelvic floor, dumping into the lower back. You've got to keep it low, keep the shoulders in the floor and the skull into the floor. Now from here, you're going to learn to segmentally lower down to the floor. So you're going to bring the mid back by drawing the ribs in, making sure that the ribs don't flare. If you feel that you've got a hollow gap just under the ribs, you need to feel like you're bringing the ribs together and knitting all the muscles from the back side of the body in towards your navel and then lower the mid back to the floor and ground the sacrum down to the floor, but keep the glutes lifted and really feel that connection up into the glutes, holding strong into the pelvic floor cavity, into the diaphragmatic cavity and come all the way down. For everybody that's been functional and active during these COVID times and you're learning stuff off of the um, screen and on the internet, I would recommend a daily pelvic reset and an activation of the posterior chain, whether that's first thing in the morning or just before your gym class or your yoga class. This is a really good way just to kind of reset the body. Then from here, grab your block, stick it between your thighs, the short face horizontally facing towards you. Interlace the fingers just behind your skull, bringing the elbows down onto the floor. And then from here, take inventory of what happens there into most people during this kind of a position. They want to bring the elbows down to the floor. The mid back starts to peel off of the floor and they start to flare the ribs open towards the ceiling. What you want to feel is, is that you're drawing the mid back to the floor and drawing the ribs together and feel like you're squeezing the block right between your thighs. Big toes pushing into the floor and squeeze up into the hamstring and the glutes. You're gonna cup the forearms just around your temples and we're gonna activate into the ab deep abdominal muscles here, front side of the body. Take a long deep breath in. Exhale, keep the sacrum down and lift the head and shoulders off of the floor. Most people when they come up into this position, they wanna scrunch the neck and pull the neck forwards. I want you to feel that you're pushing the skull into the palms and draw the elbows as if they're being pulled towards the ceiling instead. Keep the belly down and look towards the top of the navel. Often what I see here is people start scooping into the sort of um, lower back and they get this dome-like shape into the belly. What you're actually doing here is compressing into the lower back to come up into a, an abdominal activation. So with the hands behind your head, really get that effort to draw the navel down and feel like you're pushing the skull into the floor. Inhale at the top and then exhale down. You're gonna inhale, shoulders on the floor, and exhale, lift. Give me two more here, inhale down, and exhale, lift. Inhale down, and exhale, lift. From here, we're gonna add on. You're gonna turn your elbows over to the right side. From this side view, you're gonna see that my right shoulder blade stays off of the floor. A lot of time people turn and they drop that right shoulder blade, compensating into that left hip. What you wanna feel is that you're compressed down into the side ribs, keeping that right shoulder blade off of the floor. It's a very small turn. Imagine your um, spine is the trunk and you're turning into the trunk. Back to center, inhale down. 
Exhale, lift and turn to the left. Inhale, back to center and all the way down. Exhale, lift and turn from here. We're gonna reach the left hand this time outside your right thigh. As we're working into the wrists and mobilizing into the shoulders, I want you to feel like you're pushing the left palm into an imaginary wall and get what we call the learn L into place. Learn to pull back with the fingers, heel of the palm pushing away and draw strong, keeping that right shoulder blade off of the floor. Inhale, left hand behind your head and lower. Exhale, lift and turn to the right. Left hand stays behind your head, release the right arm behind, um, outside the left thigh and push that right palm away. Find your learn L's activating up into the fingers. Draw the navel down, hold strong. Inhale, right hand behind your head and lower. One more, exhale, lift. Turn to the right, right hand stays behind your skull. Keeping the right shoulder blade off of the floor, push your left palm away. Long deep breath in, keep the jaw soft and exhaling. Inhale, left hand behind your head and lower down. And exhale, lift. Turn to the left. One last push. Right hand outside the left thigh. Find your learner L's. Push the heel of the right palm away and keep the left shoulder blade off of the floor. Inhale, right hand behind your head and lower. That should feel like you're really nicely warmed up. Everything should feel connected into the upper belly, lower belly, but also into the sacrum and the pelvis. From here, you're gonna rock up, but keep it functional. Keep the left ankle just on top of the right, hands towards the ceiling, and with a little bit of momentum, just come up into a seated position. You can repeat that a few times just to roll out the spine. Exhale, lift, and down. And then switch legs, right ankle over the left, coming back down. One last one, all the way down and back up. From here, you're gonna tuck the feet underneath your thighs. You can balance on the outside edges of the toes. You're gonna reach the fingers as wide as you can forwards. Drive the belly down, chest over the thighs and see if you can pick yourself up off of your bottom. Take the left leg back, right leg back. From here, you're gonna come onto quadruped, which is knees down, wrists right below the shoulders. And from here, I want you guys to mark a sort of rectangular shape, almost like a square, between the base of both your palms, the knees and the, and the toes. Often what I see here is people tucking their toes, ankles start to roll out. And then what starts to happen is their elbows are facing outwards and they've got this massive gap underneath the index finger and the thumb. Now what starts to happen there is, is that you're caving the shoulders towards the floor, your chest is completely fallen forwards, and you're flaring your entire pelvic floor and your diaphragmatic cavity to the floor. And nothing is connected. You're compromised into your lower back and your glutes are never gonna be able to fire up in this position. So what you wanna feel is the first thing you do when you land your palms onto the mat, you've gotta push the base of the palms into the mat. And I often challenge my students in class to find the hole of the pad of the palm down into the floor and keep your five fingers lifted. And straight away, you're gonna feel the forearms firing up. And then travel up towards the elbow creases. You want the elbow creases turned forwards. And in order to turn the elbow creases forwards, you've gotta have the stabilizer muscles, which are your triceps, pulling upwards and feeling engaged. And then you load the shoulders right above the wrists. So from here, keep practicing, just turning the elbows in and out. Keep the knees right below the hips. So your knees are not too far back, keeping the hips to the floor. They're not too far back in order for you to sort of cave down into the shoulders. Feel like you're a strong tabletop. Keep the palms pushing into the mat. Turn the elbows in and turn the elbows out. Turn the elbows in, turn the elbows out and keep your skull in line with the shoulders, shoulders in line with the sacrum. 
A lot of the time I see people looking down to the toes or their neck kind of starts dropping down to the floor. <clears throat> you're hyperextending into the back of the neck and your jaw muscles and the upper traps start to take all the load. So you want to feel like you're actually stacked up. I call this the chicken head move. You can practice this, just taking the head down towards the floor and back up. And then feel that the head is connected up in a neutral line towards your shoulders. Turning the elbows in and out, just warming up into the wrists. <clears throat> Keep the navel drawn in. Don't let that lower pelvis just drop to the floor. Keep it tucked. Glutes are also kind of squeezing together. Feel the sit bones fusing together and use your big toes. And then from here, hold the wrists in a neutral position. And all I want you to do without turning the elbow creases. So watch me here. I didn't turn my elbows out. Keeping the palms forwards, I want you to learn to lift the palm a couple of inches off the floor and then flip the wrist. You're gonna land the wrist over and hold there for about five seconds, just loading into the back of the wrists. Fingers have to stay wide, thumbs out in an L shape and then flip the palm back in. And over to the left side, lift up, flip it over, bring the wrist down and over. And you can keep practicing this three or four times over to the right, maybe even have the left at the same time. Turn the left, turn the right. And then from here, I'm gonna change this up. Turn the fingers just towards your knees. Heel of the palm to the north side of your mat, thumbs pulling out wide. Tucking the tailbone towards the heels, pull back in a straight line. As soon as people start pulling back here, they start caving down into the shoulders and your belly starts going to the floor. You're not doing anything for your wrists, but actually you're putting all the pressure into your knees. So you've got to keep the tailbone tucked, keep the spine in a neutral position. Pull the tailbone back, lengthening into the forearms. Take a long deep breath in and exhale forwards. And again, back, inhale and forwards and back and forwards turn the wrists back up one last little wrist strengthener here you're going to keep the palms wide keeping the base of the knuckles into the floor keeping the toes tucked you're not pulling up and down bending the elbows you're pushing into the knuckles lifting up from the forearms and then pushing down do this a few times just to warm up the wrists, warm up the forearms. Take a look at position of the position of my elbow creases, constantly turned forwards. Up and down. That's it. And then from here, see if you can sit back into your heels. Give the wrists a bit of a shake out. The wrists are the most adaptable parts of your body, as are the ankles. They're the sort of most strongest, if you like, load-bearing joints in the body. So the more you work into them, the more they stay adaptable. And then from here, just gonna take the palms out and I want you to hold eccentrically as if you're pushing an imaginary wall just in front of you. Watch the tailbone, don't let the belly sag forwards. Tilt and hold a neutral pelvis. Elbow crease turn forwards. Generally, your elbow crease always faces the, the direction of your fingers. Turn up and hold. Don't squeeze the shoulders back. Don't protract the shoulders. This is a really good way to start warming up for any kind of plank positions, for any kind of workout that you're gonna be kind of loading up into the wrists and the arms. So hold here, watch my triceps. Pull them up, stabilize the elbows, stabilize the wrists. And then shake out. And then from here, you're gonna start into a dolphin. So what you're gonna do from here is bring your forearms down onto the floor. Palms in line with the uh, crease of the elbows, crease of the elbows in line with the shoulders. So you want a square position all the time. Push the base of the palms into the floor, tuck your tailbone. Take a long deep breath in, puff the shoulders towards the ceiling, crown of the head to the floor. Take a long deep breath in. Exhaling. Squeeze just the shoulder blades together. So I'm not dipping into my lower belly and I'm not trying to look up. 
I'm learning to articulate into my spine and use the gliding motion into my scapula to get this movement. Push the crown of the head to the floor, puff the shoulders to the ceiling, inhale. Exhale. Coming down. Inhale back up. And then from here, lifting up the hips, pushing the forearms into the floor. Hollow the space between your stomach. You don't need to have straight knees. I'd much rather see heels lifted. Tip the weight over the shoulders, keeping the hips nice and tall. Hold here. Long deep breath in. Inhale and exhale. From here, you're gonna start loading into the wrists, loading into the arms. You're gonna bring the knees down, look forwards over the thumbs, take a deep breath in, and then take the tailbone back up. Jaw soft, head is soft. Push down with the forearms, create that space between your shoulder blades. Inhale down, and exhale back up. See if you can take an even more load into the shoulders. Take your right leg up, point and flex the toes here. Left knee soft. Keep pushing the forearms away. Bring the right foot down. Hold here. Adjust the forearms if you need and take the left leg up. Tuck and point the toes. And then from here, slowly lower the knees. Coming up into a kneeling position from here. Squeeze into the glutes. We're gonna start standing up. But instead of just kind of flopping and coming into the floor, into standing, you're gonna have your hands on your hips. Tuck your toes, heels in line with the back of the knees, knees in line with the hips. Engage into the glutes. It's not a squeeze and you're not pushing the pelvis forwards. Maintain your neutral pelvis, hands on your hips. From here, you're gonna step the left foot forwards, take a long deep breath in, push off of your right toes, come up into standing. Right knee down, and left knee down. Step the right foot forwards, push off of the left toes, and come down. You're gonna change, bring the right left foot forwards, push off of the right toes, and come up all the way down, left knee back. Right foot forwards, and from here. Come all the way up into standing, and simply step the left foot forwards. So coming up into a standing position, keep your feet hip width apart, and see if you can find a little bit of a gap between each of your toes. So often what happens is everyone kind of has their feet and shoes all day and there's just no mobility into the metatarsals and into the toes. So we're just going to warm up the toes here. You're going to keep the big toes on the floor and lift just the baby toes. And feel the uh, weight into the feet equal, not just into the back of the heels, kind of swaying the body off of balance, but also not too far forwards because that won't let you lift up the baby toes individually and then bring the baby toes down and lift the big toes. Keeping the pad of the foot into the floor all the time, so you're not rolling the feet out either. Big toes down, baby toes left. Baby toes down, big toes left. Big toes down, baby toes left. Baby toes down, big toes left. Baby toes up, big toes down. Baby toes down, big toes left. And then from here, stay grounded. Push the soles of the feet into the floor. I say this all the time, but very specifically. You wanna feel that you're pushing the feet into the floor, drawing the energy up from the ground, up into the glutes. So my legs are not wobbly, and they're not, they're not kind of all over the place. Lift up into the femurs, but without locking out the knees and tilting the pelvis forwards. You're gonna have that pelvis in a neutral position by just retracting into the glutes. And then from here, draw the pelvis down as you lift the hands all the way up to the ceiling. Feel that lengthening from the shoulder blades. You're gonna feel like you're climbing a rope, just reaching one arm to the ceiling at a time. Lengthening into the side of the body. So I'm not swinging into my hip. This isn't what I'm doing. I'm staying steady in my legs, using the scapula, your shoulders to help you lengthen. 
reaching up and down, palms staying wide, fingers nice and wide. And then from here, I want you to push your bum back, watch my knees. We're coming into a triple flexion here. Arms staying in line with the ears, push your bum back. For many of us with lack of mobility into the feet, and anyone who's an avid squatter in the gym, if your knees start to pop forwards, what I want you to do is take your feet a little bit wider. Have your index finger and thumb into the crease of the hip and push back with the glutes. Feel like you're squeezing the sit bone of the glutes together and get the chest over the thighs. Bring your palms either side of your feet and push your palms into the floor. Watch my elbow creases, watch the index finger and the thumb. The space underneath the index finger and the thumb has to feel like it's pushing down. Then get length into the spine. You're not rounding the shoulders, lifting the hip, trying to straighten out the legs. Your knees are just coming down to the floor. Step your right leg back, squeeze into the glutes. Don't drop that right hip, keep the pelvis neutral. And a really good way to take inventory of your pelvis is to just stick a block on top of the sacrum. Push the palms down, from here, ground the right knee. For the first round, keep the right toes tucked, pull back into the right glute, and arms lift. You're gonna twinkle, twinkle into your palms. Really spreading the fingers and activating into the triceps. So we're not just kind of flopping the arms down. Keep lifted and draw with the pelvis back. Chin in line with the shoulders. Biceps in line with the ears. Bring the right palm down, push the right palm into the floor. Take your right, left arm towards the ceiling, stacking into the right shoulder blade and feel that squeeze into the right glute. Release your right ear down to the right shoulder and breathe. Bring the left palm down, tuck your back toes. We're gonna work back into a high plank. Stepping the left foot back. Now immediately here, some people will drop their hips, collapsing into the shoulders. And again, they'll find that there's a gap between the index finger and the thumb. Gotta keep learning to push the pad of the palms down, feel the push and the pull up with the tricep. For anyone that's struggling with the arm strength, keep the knees down into the floor. And instead of having your bum turning up to the ceiling and the belly collapsing to the floor, you tuck your tailbone and squeeze the glutes. Toes staying into the mat. That's your first kind of modification there. For everybody else, you can lift up the knees. And watch here, I'm not tilting my tailbone to the sky, but I'm also not overly protracted into my shoulders. I wanna feel the shoulders sitting onto my ribs and draw the energy between my glutes. So you're gonna grab your block and stick it right between your thighs. A lot of people forget the importance of glutes in a plank position. If your glutes are not gonna work, your core is not gonna be able to activate. Elbows turn forwards and hold here. Feel like you're recruiting the glutes, feel like your belly's drawn up. And then from here, you're gonna drop the knees in a straight line. Exhale, lift back up. Inhale down, exhale back up. Inhale down and back up. Drop the knees, release your block. We're gonna work into half push-ups. Take your shoulders over the wrists. So we're not back here, and we're not too far forwards. You've gotta keep the shoulders right above the wrists. Keep the tailbone tucked. You're gonna drop down to the floor, keeping the crown of the head and the tailbone in one line, bending the arms in towards your ribs. Inhale, exhale, push up. Inhale down, exhale, push up. I see so many people doing their push-ups either like this or like this or even like this. And whilst technically there's nothing wrong with it, pretty sure that you might get some injury. Also, you probably won't be able to load bare into your shoulders. So if you work the elbows, if you work the palms and you connect your ribs and the glutes, everything starts to hinge in one line down to the floor and push back up. Inhale down and back up. For anyone who wants an extra challenge, you start lowering halfway down. Inhale down and back up. 
Inhale down and back up. Meet everybody down with the knees, chest coming down. From here, drop the hips and we're gonna roll out the shoulders. Palms staying down into the floor, elbows pointing backwards. Feet coming into the floor, squeeze the glutes and just start rolling the shoulders backwards. You're not lifting up, squeezing into the neck. Keep the neck long. Roll the shoulders back and breathe. Maybe even start to roll the shoulders one by one. And watch my belly here. I'm not just sagging down, letting my tailbone lift. I've got a tuck in my pelvis and my belly button slightly lifted off of the floor in a posterior tilt. Holding the low back secure, not dumping into my lower back. Roll it back. Then from here, bring the forehead down, reset, push the pad of the palms into the floor. Tucking the tailbone, tucking your toes, lift back up. And then from here, you'll pull back and hold your downward dog. Once again, with down dog, often I see people pulling down with the chest, okay? You're kind of crushing into the shoulder blades. What I want you to do instead, feel like you're pushing the palms away. Take the shoulders towards your ears. Bend the knees and get a straight line from the crown of the head to the top of the tailbone and hold. Your knees don't need to be straight. It's about the length into the tailbone, into the pelvis, starting with the crown of the head, push away. Good. And then from here, step your right foot forwards and bring the left knee down. Don't let the palms peel off of the floor. If you push the palms hard enough into the floor, you get the space in the hips to move the legs. Pull back into the left glute and arms lift. Back into the twinkle, twinkle motion, keeping the fingers wide, working into the wrists, working into the forearms. Don't let the belly sag forwards. Keep the pelvis neutral. Left glute is engaged. Push the right toes down. And then from here, you can take another plank, tuck the left toes, step your right leg back. Keep working to keep the palms directly below the shoulders. You can have a mirror just in front of you. If you're here, work to bring the weight over the shoulders, over the wrists and hold. You can drop the knees. Halfway down, inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale down, drop the hips. Feet into the floor as you roll the shoulders back. Cobra lift. Exhale down. And from here, coming back into quadruped. Just gonna turn the wrists back over. Tuck the toes and pull back. And forwards. Inhale, draw back. Exhale, forwards. And then from here, you can bring the palms like a butterfly inside of the wrists, touching, fingers wide. And all you're gonna do from here, holding your tabletop, keeping the shoulders neutral, just to wind down, you can start drawing circles into the floor. Other direction. And sit back into the heels. And you can come down onto the floor one last time. Bringing your spine, your skull, your shoulders, your sacrum into the floor. No, it's okay. And then from here, palms up and feel like you're holding waiter's trays. Find that L shape between your thumb and your index fingers. Heel of the palm pushing away. Skull into the floor, shoulders into the floor and hold. Elbow creases facing the same direction as your fingers. Bring the right palm over the left and draw the left fingers down. Take a deep breath in. 
and exhale. And then from here, left palm over the right and draw the right fingers down. And shake out the wrists. And slowly come back up and seated. If you have any questions about today, if you have any wrist sort of uh, wrist issues, if you have any injuries that you'd like to discuss, just get in touch with the team at Momentum. You can get in touch with me. You can follow my Instagram, yogality2020. Follow Momentum also on Instagram. And let's just try and keep healthy, establish safe, sustainable, optimal movement. Thank you.